So the way this works, it's fairly straightforward. You have a 744020 here, which is the same family as the 4060 that we used before, except it doesn't have the clock generation circuitry. And the advantage of that is that pretty much all the output signals are there, all the dividing signals are there. So while the 4060 missed out some of the dividing levels. Um, this one basically does everything between 3 and 13, which is great because it means you get a, the slower end of the clocks, you get four outputs in a row, whereas with the 4060 when he got three, and so we had to pick higher end, higher speed clocks. Um, again, we've got another 4067 multiplexer here. Uh, this time I haven't attach wires to either board, I've just put them into a breadboard, which honestly is much, much easier. The only thing I'm not sure about is I can't remember which way around these, these enable pins go, so it may or may not work. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to stick a signal on the blue wire, um, sine wave, probably 5 kilohertz, and I'm going to see if I get any outputs along here. Go. So we've got the circuit rigged up to essentially a 5 kilohertz sine wave coming in. Um, and we can see the outputs just basically pick the first four outputs of the multiplexer. As we can see on the scope, lines are being selected. They are quite noisy. Not entirely sure why that's the case. If we zoom in, if we zoom in on the signals, you can see that there's quite a bit of noise there. We try a capacitor. It works better 
if you get the power to the right rail. Um, but in any case, that's now doing what I'd expect it to do in the getting different channels selected. There we go, you can see it happening there. Um, that's doing precisely what I want it to do. So the next step will be to connect it up to the previous video's rat's nest and see whether or not the counter counts. Okay, so this is with no load on the multiplexer. You can see that each of the four random channels I've picked are triggering at different times. If I pick one of the wires, go over so we can see it, and I plug it into one of the connections here that's for the coils, the signal just goes nuts. We can zoom in a bit fast, a bit closer on the signal. That's one volt per division. I think the issue is that multiplexer is not able to drive the coil, basically. I won't plug it again. There we go. Signals are doing what I expect them to do. They don't when I plug it into the coils. I've been trying to work out why the circuit isn't working quite the way I expected it to. I'm doing something a little bit of investigating. The signal on the scope is the output of the 4020. Um, and it's, it's what you expect. It's divided signal. That divided signal is fed into the multiplexer and the multiplexer is getting a clock wire on, on, on this blue wire that you can see at the bottom here that I'm just about waggling my screwdriver at. The outputs of the multiplexer should be sequential one after the other. We've seen that on the, on the previous scope image. What's curious is if I take a wire, which is this, which is going to the comparator circuits, in other words, to drive the LED, and I put that on any of these outputs, two strange things happen. Firstly, light comes on and stays on, it doesn't switch, and secondly, it kills the Output signal from the 4020 dead, and I don't know why. And if I remove it, LED goes off, and the signal returns. So we can see that the multiplexer is in fact working the way we expect it to, uh, in that it's sending short bursts. And again, if I connect a wire, and again, I'm to any of them, it doesn't matter which one I connect it to, that just goes dead. I need to isolate the signal coming out of the multiplexer from the coils. I thought maybe the answer to this would be this little device here, which is a buffer, essentially, it's a non inverting buffer, it's a line driver. Specifically, it's a 74HC245, which the camera's not going to focus on, so you can't see them. There we go. At last! So with that connected up, we can see that we're getting basically the same thing, only now it's buffered. And sometimes it's dropping them for some reason. Maybe that's just a connection issue. 
In any case, take my magic wire. You connect it to one of those outputs. Yeah. Well, it comes on. So it's, it is actually doing what I want it to do in that it is driving the LED. A lot of other lights come on, though, as well. Um, it's supposed to be a one, and you can see that basically all the LEDs are coming on to a greater or lesser extent. At this point, I realised something that I already knew. If the signal going into the coils is a alternating sine wave, then the display shows correctly. If, on the other hand, the signal going into the coils is a square wave, or a CMOS signal, and all the LEDs come on, and I already knew this, so using a line driver to drive the coils is not going to work. I think I have a solution to this problem using a, a technology more in line with the, uh, the age of the, the rope core memory. But I don't have the parts to do it. So I'm going to shelve the project till I can order the parts to do it. AliExpress? No, I can't. 